For once, I'm not even sure how to approach this topic. Maybe you aren't either. Let's figure out a way. How you doing, everybody? Andrew Scott, and you are back at the VO Booth Camp. So, this business that you're either in or trying to get in is getting harder by the minute. Now, I've gone on and on about the artificial intelligence revolution, apocalypse. I'm not quite sure. And I don't really need to say much more on that. But today's video is about something that I do need to say something about. And I can speak to it from firsthand experience in the same way I can speak to voiceover from firsthand experience. As I said, getting into this business is getting harder. And you might have dreams of being a voice talent one day when you grow up or build your business bigger or get more prestigious and visible jobs. And as I said, I'm not sure where we're going with that. Now, as far as I can see right now, there's still plenty of business to be had. Nothing has really changed all that much. But to think that it's going to get easier is an error in thinking. And that's going to push some people to decisions that they might not want to make about whether or not to pursue this in the first place or whether or not to stay at it. And I did a video uh, about that topic up there. But let's talk about today and the here and now. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And this year, above all years, I've really been feeling it. Now, to be open with you, I've suffered from mental health issues my whole life. Uh, from seasonal depression to clinical depression to a number of other behavioral pathologies that I don't need to talk about right now, but just know they're there. And generally speaking, I've always been pretty open about it. But I don't come from a people and a place where that openness was particularly well received. And I think if you're not one of these people, you know somebody like this, right? Where they come from a culture or a family or a place where we just don't talk about that. I've never been a fan of the we shall not talk about it approach. All that ever does is make anything worse. And you certainly don't want to worsen mental health. Now, in my last video, we talked about some things in the voiceover world that you might not think about. Things like environment and how they impact your voice or your eyes. But today, we're going to spend a couple minutes talking about how voiceover and the voiceover business impacts your mental health. It's an important discussion. And I don't see a whole lot of VO professionals and educators on YouTube talking about it. That's one of the reasons why. You know, my videos aren't normally nuts and bolts stuff. They're broader. I try to approach things that maybe other people aren't talking about because they're not the how to fix this or how to get it to sound like that approach. Because the one thing that I know that VO has put in my life for both good and ill is a different way at looking at my mental health. So let's talk about it. So everybody who's been in this business for a little while and has gotten some paying jobs knows what an incredibly euphoric feeling it feels like to not only get hired for a gig, but to complete the gig and get the money for it. I mean, I'm about as the same as everybody else. I've still got a picture of the first check that I ever got that I earned with my voice. And I'm still very fond of that memory. It's, it's cool, it's great. But anybody who's been in this business for a little while knows the rejection impacts your mental health. And those rejections are something that can really weigh on you. If you're so passionate about doing something and 
you feel that you're getting pretty skilled at it. Constantly getting rejected for your efforts is a real kick in the fill in a body part. So you need to be aware if you're thinking about getting in this industry or if you're just started. Because ask anybody who's been doing this for a couple years, and they'll say that at some point in time on their calendar, they just bottom out and everything feels like it's pointless. Now, another aspect of the home view business that we don't really talk about except to maybe laud it and make it sound noble, and that's the grind. Now, you know, for those of you who might not be familiar with this term, the grind is just the day-to-day -day get up, bang out 20 auditions, go through emails, do your work, get your files to your clients, have somebody go to sleep, get up, wash, rinse, repeat, okay? And there's a lot of talk in VO circles about the grind. And as I said uh, a moment ago, a lot of people vault this and say, yeah, man, it's grind, man. I do the grind. Grinding, for as necessary as it might be at some points, isn't particularly healthy. It's not particularly good for you. You need other things aside from what you're doing. Now, that doesn't mean you can treat voiceover practice as some casual thing, right? You do need to stick with it because if you step away for a while and you come back, you'll feel the rust. Trust me. So another thing that comes up is people who struggle because they're impatient for success or impatient to learn something. And this can actually be really mentally and emotionally taxing on you. You know, on one hand, you might be a person who's got skills, got talent, and the success just isn't coming fast enough. It's just not washing over you the way you thought it would be. And that can lead to some significant you know, emotional issues where you start to doubt yourself or, or doubt your pursuit. And another one that comes in, which quite often comes into play with my coaching students, and that is impatience for progress, impatience for improvement. We still have this misconception that learning to talk is easy. Again, we're not learning to talk. We're learning to read. We're learning to perform. They're different. And if you constantly keep thinking that you're simply learning to talk good versus learning how to perform and read and emote and act, a lot of people get very frustrated and very disappointed in that they're just not getting it. They're just not making the progress they feel they should be making. And a lot of the things that I said previously are exacerbated by two things. First off, is this hyper-concentration that we often have to bring to the work we do or the auditions that we're editing. We're, we're so, we're focused like a laser on just this little bandwidth that's scrolling by. And as my previous video mentioned, that can actually make you physically sick. But studies have shown that those people who spend long periods of time in deep states of concentration without getting an immediate result tend to get depressed, unhappy, disaffected, because they're not getting that feedback right away. They've done all the concentration, all the concentration, and they put it out there. And yeah, we don't hear back from the client for days. And that concentration problem gets compounded when you talk about being in a darkened space. Now, a lot of us have booth setups in closets or, you know, PVC forts or the short form of it is for some reason, people love keeping that environment dark. I think it's it, it has to do with them wanting to feel like this is their VO space. That that's all fine and good. But. Being in that dark space, being in a darkened space for long periods of time wreaks havoc on your brain and your mental health. So this 
last thing that I'm going to talk about is the one where I feel not only the most passionate about, but also I feel that there is a easy and cheap solution. What we do for the most part is a really, really lonely pursuit. We don't often talk to people when we're working, when we're working on a project, partly due to that whole hyper-concentration thing that we have to do. I haven't mentioned this much in my videos, but let me remind you that here in May of 2023, we're just now coming out of a global pandemic that has cost millions of lives and very likely has affected somebody that you know or love. If you've lost somebody, I'm sorry. If you've gotten sick, I hope you're better. That alone was an incredibly isolating experience, not just for a little while, but for months, for years. And some of us, like me, who have the dubious honor of being multiple high-risk categories, I still don't go many places. That isolation at, at the time, most of us in home VO kind of joked about it and laughed about it and say, you know, we were made for this time. Um, that, that might've been true, but I don't think any of us expected it to last that long or this long. And at the same time, while all that was going on, you all very well know how fractured our society became. You know, we started off with everybody singing out in the streets to honor EMS and, and ER workers. And then it all devolved into everybody fighting about politics and freedom and, and on and on and on. So we went into this pandemic and came out of it not only a fractured society, but an isolated and divided one. Now, I've got friends from all over the political spectrum, all throughout the political spectrum that I respect and love. Now, I know that that might seem to be a bit of a privilege to be able to say that because it's turning into the exception and not the norm anymore. But I say all that because, again, we work in a very compartmentalized and siloed endeavor. You know, I've got my, my little studio here, and this is where I spend my day. I spend my day recording. I spend my day making videos for you all and for other projects and for clients. You know, I try to remind myself to get up, get around, get moving every once in a while. It's kind of important for my physical health. But over the past number of years, I also realized that I needed to get out of this space for my mental health and connect with people however it was possible to do so. We tend to forget that there are other people out there and that there are other pursuits and other things to be interested in and other things to be passionate about or to laugh at or to cry about. Being so myopic about voiceover will make you a very, very, very lonely person. And loneliness is a significant mental health and physical health problem. Down in the links, there's a link to an article uh, that just went up today on the AP, where they found, studies have found that loneliness increases your chance of sudden death by 30%. And those people who don't have strong social networks of one kind or another are at a greater increase for all sorts of horrible things. Like, I mean, depression goes without saying, but stroke and heart attack and other things like dementia. Now, obviously some of those things have genetic components as well, right? But anything that you have to deal with that increases your risk for something like heart attack or stroke, you need to take seriously. And don't just think that this is a boomer and Gen X problem. One of the most impacted age groups is 17 to 24 year olds. So 
That might be you just thinking about getting into voice acting right now. You need to take these things into consideration and do things to help prevent them. And the number one thing you can do is have some kind of contact, regular contact with the community. Now, obviously, I'd love it if you'd come join us over at the Bootcamp Discord server, because to be perfectly honest, half the time we're talking about voiceover. The other half of the time, we're just keeping each other company and making each other laugh. And that's a remedy. That's medicine. That works to help stave things like this off. But it doesn't have to be VO specific. Just be connected with people, however you can, however it works for you. Regular Zoom calls with friends. Hang out for 15, 20 minutes. I do that quite often throughout my work week, where I'll just talk with a friend of mine across town. Just to feel something different. But to wrap this up, if you feel that you're struggling or need help or simply want to address your mental health issues differently, reach out to somebody. Hell, reach out to us on Discord. We are there. We are there 24-7. There's always somebody on our Discord server from anywhere in the world. But if you really need help, I highly, highly recommend you find someone to talk to. A good place to start if you feel that you don't know where to turn, is the organization Hope for the Day. You can get a hold of them 24-7 on the web at hftd.org. Mental health is a real and significant issue in the home voiceover community. And not enough people are talking about it. Not enough people talk about how depressing this business can be, how depressing and and difficult the work is, and just trying to get your foot in and constantly being told no takes a toll on you. Don't pay that toll. Reach out. My name's Andrew Scott, and I suffer from clinical depression, ADD, and anxiety. And that's okay. Because even in home voiceover, it is okay to not be okay. If you need help, reach out to Hope for the Day at hftd.org. The best voices in home VO are confident ones. And you can help yourself keep or earn that confidence by asking for help when you really need it. Until next time, everybody, this is Andrew Scott, and this is the VO Booth Camp. Take good care, everybody. Bye-bye.